Astronomers measure the speed of light as the highest speed in the universe, and nothing can move faster than that. Light is a type of energy, and it is a form of electromagnetic radiation of a wavelength which can be detected by the human eye. If you could travel at the speed of light, you could go around the Earth seven and a half times in a second. Will we be able to reach the speed of light in the future? Stay until the end if you want to know how some new warp drive concepts might make this possible. Before we start, if you enjoy tech content, consider subscribing or liking the video. These videos take a lot of time to make, and only a small percentage of my viewers are subscribed. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Alamus Romer was the first to successfully measure the speed of light in vacuum. Today, the speed of light is measured in vacuum, and the exact value of the point is considered to total 299,792,458 meters per second. Light minutes and light seconds are closely linked to light years, which were connected to distance, not time. If we say an object is 5 light minutes away, we would actually see its image from 5 minutes ago. Light travels from the Earth to the Moon in about 1 to 3 seconds, and light from the Earth to Mars in about 3 minutes. Sunlight takes about 8 minutes to reach our eyes. Next closest to us is Proxima Centauri, which is around 4 to 2 light years away. Traveling through the width of the galaxy would require 100,000 years, and traveling across the observable universe would require 100 billion years. Therefore, the stars we see in our skies are images of hundreds and even millions of years ago. Thus, we use the speed of light to make our telescopes work. Is it possible to travel faster than the speed of light? It is the fastest thing in existence, and it is a law of the universe that nothing can move faster than light. Light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, and can go from Earth to the Moon in less than a second. It can streak from Los Angeles to New York in a blink of an eye. 1% of anything doesn't sound like much, but when it comes to light, that's still a lot, roughly 7 million miles per hour. And 1% of the speed of light, a trip to Los Angeles to New York, would take just over a second. That's 10,000 times more faster than a commercial jet. Bullets can fly at 4,200 kilometers per hour, which is three times as fast as sound. Despite its impressive top speed, NASA's X-3 jetcraft is only 0.001% of the speed of light. Rockets are used to break free of Earth's gravity, which require a speed of 40,000 kilometers per hour. Spacecraft are the fastest human-made objects. After NASA's Parker Solar Probe launched from Earth in 2018, it skimmed the sun's scorching atmosphere and used the sun's gravity to reach 535,000 kilometers per hour. That's blindingly fast, but only 0.05% of the speed of light. What's holding humanity back from reaching 1% of the speed of light? The main obstacle holding humanity back is energy. Any object that is moving in space has energy because of its motion. Physicists call this kinetic energy. If you want to go faster, you need more kinetic energy. The problem is that it takes a lot of energy to increase speed. To make something go twice as fast requires four times the energy. If you want something to go three times as fast, you need nine times as much energy. If a teenager who weighs 50 kilograms were accelerated to 1% of the speed of light, it would take 200 trillion joules. That's about the same amount of energy that 2 million people in the US use in a day. One such invention is the M-Drive, which, if perfected, would allow us to reach the most remote parts of the universe very quickly. The M-Drive works, theoretically, by trapping microwaves in a shape of a chamber where their bounce produces thrust. 
Since the chamber is closed, it will appear to move without any fuel input or thrust output. The M drive is based on Newton's second law, which states that force is defined as change in momentum. Therefore, an electromagnetic wave traveling at the speed of light has a certain momentum that transfers to a reflector, resulting in a tiny force. In short, the M drive is enabled by tiny forces accumulating in great quantities, which sounds simple, but actually turns our understanding of physics on its head. As there is no energy coming in or going out, we have to ask questions like, how do the waves start? How do they continue to move? And where does their momentum come from? Scientists don't even consider the M drive seriously since you cannot have spontaneous, created momentum without an explicable push. It invalidates much of what physicists know about the universe if the M drive works. A team of physicists from Dresden University of Technology even tested the M drive and discovered that the NASA and Chinese results showing thrusts were all false positives explained by outside forces. Physicist Eric Lentz, who has 10 years of experience working on practical applications, has shown how the warp drive holds great promise. Lentz is not the first to work on making the warp drive a reality, and not just a sci-fi concept. Miguel Alcubierre, a Mexican mathematician, was the first to propose warp drives in 1994. His ideas became the foundation for future research on warp drive technology. This so-called Alcubierre warp drive, as it has to come to be known, requires an incredible amount of energy, as well as the dreaded exotic matter as a co-ingredient. Researchers have not observed or created this highly radioactive stuff in nature, much less created it. A handful of variations have been suggested since including a 2010 update to the Alcubierre Drive's physical design made by former NASA engineer Dr. Harold Sonny White. The update reduced the energy needed to a more manageable number, even if it still wasn't practical since the solution still required exotic matter, albeit much less than in the Alcubierre solution. A team of researchers from Switzerland called Applied Physics came up with their own concept. Interestingly, their warp bubble was not created using any exotic material. The speed of light, which is the holy grail of space travel, could not be exceeded by their model. As an example of how Lentz's concept differs from others, he first described the physical principles of the classic Alcubierre drive on which most other solutions are based. Using Alcubierre's solution, he said a warp drive would contract the space immediately in front of its central region and expand the space behind it. The warp drive is shown here as a wave of curvature on which a ship will ride to reach its destination. Physicist Jose Natario, back in 2002, proposed a solution that showed that the expansion and contraction are not even necessary to propulsion. Lentz, however, contends it is an essential feature of warp travel. It caused him to rethink how a warp could be created using only traditional matter rather than exotic matter. Natario was able to prove that the expansion could be trivial or zero everywhere and still transport a ship. It means that, in virtually all theoretical warp drive solutions, exotic matter is no longer needed to warp the space in front of and behind the theoretical passenger. As a result of building on Natario's theory, Lentz created his own variation that he believes is even more plausible because it is rooted in conventional physics. As well as this material difference, Lentz indicates that his solution differs geometrically from that of Alcubierre and most others because of how the energy is placed around the warp bubble. Energy density and curvatures are maximally separated in the Alcubierre solution, with the energy constrained to a small torus between the regions of high contraction and expansion. 
Instead, Lentz's proposal has highly correlated curvatures and sources with regions of high energy density and high expansion and contraction overlapping almost exactly. According to Lentz, the energy saving would have to be drastic equivalent to about 30 orders of magnitude, to be comparable to modern fission reactors. Many energy-saving mechanisms have been proposed in earlier research that can potentially reduce the energy required by nearly 60 orders of magnitude. It has moved the problem of faster-than-light travel away from theoretical research in fundamental physics and closer to engineering, he said. Next, we need to figure out how to bring down the enormous amount of energy that's needed within the scope of today's technology, like a large nuclear power plant. Then we can talk about building the first prototypes. This geometric distinction between Lentz's concept and the traditional concepts make his proposal a potentially more feasible warp solution than previous proposals. Of course, Lentz's warp drive is still purely theoretical. Although he does see a few steps which can be taken immediately to move his theory closer to reality, including reducing the amount of energy required. He said the next step would be to create a warp bubble moving at 1% of the speed of light using a modern day fission reactor. A teaching assistantship physicist said he would consider patenting his warp drive but he made it clear his work is only a small part of the rapidly growing body of work in this field. Recently, there has been an increase in new warp drive concepts after Alcubierre's 1994 proposal, giving those in his field hope that a real, testable version may be closer than we think. The progress that has recently been made in the field of warp drive has been encouraging to Lentz, who believes there are many more advances to be made over the next few years. Do you think we'll ever get to see light speed travel in our lifetimes? Let me know in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell icon so you won't miss any new videos. We cover all the news about the future of technology.